sometimes you find yourself face to screen with something that's just inscrutable. The more you try to figure it out, the stranger it gets. I'm not here to dissect why the menu screen has phonetic pronunciations below each listing, or why the interstitial cutscenes between stages are full of strange looking children under bright lighting talking on very retro telephones. Good. Is it an Ikea commercial? Is someone trying to sell me yogurt? What does this have to do with fireworks at any rate? I'm confused by this whole deal. Let me backtrack a bit. Fantavision, which has nothing to do with either the Fruit Soda or any vector graphics software for the Amiga, started out as a tech demo for the PS2, showing off just how awesome an array of fireworks can be under the power of Sony's new Dreamcast stomping machine. And, as with many shiny things that already have a good chunk of the coding done, it was soon adapted into a playable form and launched alongside the PS2 back in 2000. Right from the beginning, people were confused. They have been ever since. Anyway, much like every Extend Extra or Res, Fantavision is a simple, single idea implemented as effectively as possible. You set off fireworks. That's what it comes down to. There's awesome music playing in the background. There are strange children smiling, but none of that matters. You set off fireworks. These fireworks are in different colors, as well as multicolored wild flares. By using the left analog stick, you can aim your reticule at a flare, jump to it, and to the next, and so on, until you've assembled three flares of the same color. Then you press circle and BOOM! So starts the explosions. Wild flares allow you to detonate different colors at the same time, forming daisy chains for massive points. Each flare that you fail to detonate in a timely fashion scores a hit against your energy meter, miss too many flares, and you fail the stage. As you progress, you'll collect power-ups that can expand the size of your fireworks, allowing for bigger and more lucrative chain reactions, as well as bonus points, energy, and so on. Collecting eight star icons initiates star mine mode, which, well, it's really, really shiny, and racks up the points like no one's business. There are five stages in the single-player campaign, which take you from a resort town all the way into outer space. These can be visited with a friend in the head-to-head -head mode. The competition gives each player their own reticule and draws a line down the middle of the screen. You get to blast the flares on your side and attempt to clear a target number before your opponent. This mode adds some power-ups, including relocating where the line is drawn and flopping the screen horizontally in trading spaces. Supporting both experiences is the music, which varies from upbeat techno tracks to some more relaxed, dare I say, Gershwin-esque sound. Tech demos exist in their moment. All you need is the next machine to evolve the status quo and outdate all tech demos before it. Yet even now, Fantavision holds up. It speaks to the strength of the idea itself when you can take something that was just meant to show off and actually convert it into something playable and, well, downright fun. All I'm saying is, pilot wings didn't need any creepy children. And their phones. And their smiles. Starmine.